Okay, now on to seasoning a bag the way that I do it. This is a different bag, so don't be confused. I just got done recording the one about tying in a bag, but this is a different bag. Airtight seasoning. There's a few different brands out there. This is the one that I use. Um, it's your preference, it doesn't really matter. And what you'll need to do is get yourself, have your blowpipe in and your channer and your drones all corked off. And if you don't have these rubber stoppers, you can buy them from a piping supply shop or Home Depot actually sells these as well if you're in a hurry. It's a little bit less to buy it at Home Depot, but I guess the question is if you're getting the right size. So, but if you're in a hurry, Home Depot, if not, just order it from a piping supply place. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these rubber stoppers are in your stocks very securely, okay? And so don't just push on them, give them a twist. It does a better job. And then also make sure that your blow pipe is in nice and secure. If you have a split stock like this one is, you're gonna to wanna to take out the tube or any sort of moisture control system out of the inside of the bag. You definitely don't wanna want get that all over the seasoning all over that. So I take out the rubber stopper out of the channer one and sometimes it's easier if you kind of blow the bag up a little bit just to open it up so the seasoning drops down. I try and hold the channer stock, the blowpipe stock up so the seasoning that I pour in here doesn't just go straight in and get on the flapper if you have a flap or a little mac. And then when you buy the seasoning uh, airtight, it's in a, it's kind of gelatinous on the inside. So it suggests that you heat it in the microwave for about a minute without the cap on, and then you stir it up, I think, and then heat it up again for about 30 seconds. Once you've done that, it uh, tends to stay liquid after that. It might go back to being more of a a gel or a goop, if you will, if you live somewhere that's colder, but I don't really know. So I've heated this up and I'm gonna pour about half a can in here, which is a bit much if you're seasoning a bag that's already been seasoned, but for a brand new bag, you can do half of a container in here. And you wanna try and get it to not touch the side of the stock or the inside of the stock because that's where your rubber stopper is going to go. And if it does touch the inside of the stock, you're going to want to use a napkin or paper towel or Kleenex to clean the inside of that because if this isn't secure in there, if you have a little bit of liquid, this won't be tight and you'll end up having a big mess. So that goes in there nice and tight. I'm going to put the cap on this just so I don't knock it off and have a big mess. Everywhere. And now the seasonings drop down to the bottom. You can hear it down there. And you're going to want to make sure that you rock this and get it all along the inside seam or along that welt. And just make sure that it's making contact all along there. And then you're going to start to just work this around in the bag and I don't know if you can hear that it kind of sounds a little bit like sandpaper um, once you get it fully coated in seasoning it'll stop feeling like that like up here you can I can feel it's really slippery so that's how you want it to feel throughout the entire bag and I just I try and hold the stocks uh, bend it. I try and keep the stocks so they don't clank together while I'm doing this. You can already hear that that is not making as much sound. So I'm going to do that throughout the whole bag. And what happens, I think, is a lot of people don't get the difficult areas like this corner there and in between the stocks. And that's where you start having these air leaks because you've got seasoning everywhere else but haven't done the hard the hard to get areas. So I'll make sure that I get that seasoning to drain down to the bottom or the back of the bag. 
and really massage it in. And you can definitely tell when it's slippery and when it's not, or when the seasoning has coated it. So you're gonna really wanna work it around right up to where your tie-in cord is at, around your stalks, getting in between the base stock and the middle tenor and the middle tenor and the outside one is difficult. But again, that's really what determines whether you've done a good job seasoning it or not. And this bag was actually seasoned yesterday and it seemed to be airtight, but on some thicker bags, this is a Ian Murray bag. And lately the leather I've been getting from him has been nice and thick. And so I tend to have to season it twice at the start. Uh, Ian Murray makes the best, the best bagpipe bags in the world. I haven't been paid to say that, but I'm sure I'm hoping I get sponsored just from that. But they are very good bags. Bag makes a really nice bag as well. The customer that I'm tying this in for just happened to have a Murray bag, and I've been tying in a lot of Murray bags recently. The last one, the one with the blue welt, was also a Murray bag, and that was just tied in today. So again, a thicker bag, I seem to have to season it again within the first week or so. I find it unusual that I had to season it the very next day when it was airtight uh, the day before. So I just make sure I work this around all over the hard to reach areas or the hard to get to areas, making sure that it feels slippery everywhere. You don't feel any areas that feel like it's dry on the inside. Um, if you watched my last video of tying in a bag, and if you haven't seasoned your bag and you go to blow the bag up, it won't hold air at all. So a sheepskin bag is not airtight until you use some form of seasoning. But at this point now, it's pretty well seasoned. I'll blow it up as tight as I can get it to go. And I always listen for the flapper. Uh, this blowpipe doesn't go in this one all the way, so that's why you see a little gap there. I always listen to make sure that the flap isn't leaking air. And if, it, like, say the bag is deflating, a lot of times it's the flapper has maybe gotten some seasoning between the flapper and where it sets at the bottom of the hemp tenon and that's causing a leak. So if you hear that, rather than messing around with it, just put your thumb over the top of that and you can mess around with it later on trying to get it uh, to where it is not leaking air. Now, yesterday when I did this, I had uh, filled it up with air. It is still tight, you can hear. It's tight, the blowpipe. I use a blowpipe as a guide as to whether it's leaking air because if it is, this out here being such a long distance, the change in the angle is much more noticeable than it is on the stocks. But what I'll do too is I would, I set this on the ground, the bag, and I kneeled on it. Now, I think that that opens up the pore of the skin, of the sheepskin, and allows the seasoning to go in there better. Maybe I'm wrong, but it doesn't take but a few seconds to do. And I, I do that a couple times. Now, the reason you want to make sure everything is secure is because if you kneel on that bag and you have seasoning up here and this cork comes out, all that air pressure and seasoning just goes shooting everywhere and seasoning is not the, uh, the best smell. So you don't want that getting all over your house. Now my rule of thumb or my guide is that if I fill it up with air, and 30 seconds later, it's still holding the same amount of air. I consider that airtight. So it's been way more than 30 seconds. You can see this hasn't really moved at all, but I'll check. If I can put the tiniest puff of air in there after 30 seconds, I still consider it okay. So if I can get just a little bit of air in there, I consider it okay. And I was barely able to get anything in there. So what I'll do now, is I'll drain this, but I drain the excess back into the can of seasoning, especially when it's the first one or two seasonings. There's not a bunch of germs in there and, you know, 
stuff from my mo my breath and the moisture. So I feel like it's still pretty good to put back in the can. I don't like to waste it. I don't know if there's anything wrong with that, but I would say after you've had the bag for a while and it's got crud all in the inside, I don't think I would pour that back into the can. But when you go to pour this out or release the pressure, you don't want to take this loop that we put in or the loop that comes on the bag and hang it up like this under pressure and uncork this down here because all the seasoning has come down here, you'll have a huge mess. You can uncork one of these stocks right here, the uh, drone stocks to relieve the pressure, or you can have it hanging and just turn the channer one facing up and relieve the pressure, or even like right now, just leave it hang like this just for a, a minute or so and let that seasoning all drain down so it's not here and then crack it open. You're gonna to wanna to drain this quickly. You're not gonna to wanna to forget about this and leave it for a while, especially if it's in a cooler temperature, because let's say you left it in your, in your shower or outside to drain, but you left this cork in there and it's a cooler temperature, that's gonna come down here and then it's gonna to turn to gel again and you're gonna end up getting seasoning all over your reeds. So you're gonna to wanna to drain this fairly quickly after you get done seasoning it. Um, and then inevitably there will be seasoning inside of these stalks. While it's still a liquid, grab yourself a paper towel or a napkin and roll it up so it's kind of long and stuff it in there and clean it up. Get rid of that excess seasoning that uh, has accumulated on the inside. So again, if it's a brand new bag, you might season it and check it a couple days later. But usually if it's a, a bag you've had, a quick seasoning is good enough. A brand new bag, maybe you have to do it again. So I'll double check. I can't get any air in and it's been several minutes. So I'm confident that this guy is airtight.